Okay, so today we have a full review of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. Now, I absolutely love the Endorphin Speed lineup from Saucony. I've ran in the 1 in 2021, fast forward three years, and the 4 version has just come out. And I've since put around 50 miles in this shoe, or 80 kilometers. Um, I've actually tried two different pairs of the Speed 4. The pair I originally got sent out was a little bit on the big side. Uh, in an orange colorway, so if you notice any shots in that orange shoe, that was the first few runs. I realized it was slightly too big, and I went back to my original size. Um, so yeah, runs true to size. In my opinion, this is the shoe that almost puts Saucony on the map. It's one of the best daily trainers out there that you can sort of do a wide range of activity. Super versatile. It's great for those easy runs, but when you pick up the pace, it comes alive with that nylon plate. And yeah, overall, it's one of the best daily trainers out there on the market, but it does have one small issue which I'll get to later on in this video. So the Speed 4 is a neutral daily trainer with a nylon plate, not carbon fiber, a nylon plate which just offers a little bit more uh, flexibility throughout the shoe. Carbon fiber plates obviously give you a lot of propulsion, but they are very rigid, so they're not ideal for training. Whereas the nylon plate is just a little bit more forgiving, so more suited to those daily miles. Um, in terms of quick stats, we've got 36 millimeters of foam in the rear, dropping eight millimeters to 26 millimeters in the forefoot. In terms of the midsole, we've got a full length power run PB, which is what we had in the previous version. And yeah, we've got a slightly different upper, very breathable, uh, and it offers a nice bit of padding around the sort of heel counter area. It weighs 237 grams in my UK size seven and a half. And as I said, I went true to size and it comes to the market at 180 pounds here in the UK. So quite a hefty price tag which I'll talk a little bit more in later part of this video. So, so far in the testing, I've done a long run. I did an interval session on Tuesday night, some very fast um, sort of 500 meter reps and the shoe performed really well. I've done a lot of easy mileage in this shoe um, and most of the runs I've done have actually been in the wet and rain. So I've cleaned this shoe up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer on camera. But the grip on this shoe has performed really well in the, the wet conditions and I'd go as far to say as this grip is the best grip on all of the speeds so far so yeah definitely one of the plus points to this shoe is an improved grip for all conditions especially here in the UK at the moment where it is proper soggy at the moment I'm not enjoying running to be honest with you out there in the conditions but um yeah this shoe is performing very well at the moment if you like the hat that I'm wearing in today's video it is from a company called Team Varga born in the Lake District this is their full send, more casual cap. I'm a big fan of their beanies as well, especially in the colder weather here in the UK. Keep your ears nice and warm out on the runs. And if you're looking for a race day option, then look no further than their feather caps. Um, super lightweight, I wear these for my races. Um, and they're available on the Team Varga website. If you want to pick them up, then I have a discount code BEN15RUNNING, gets you 15% off across their whole website. Um, but back to today's shoe review. So as with all shoe reviews here on the channel, I like to go through some likes and dislikes. So we'll start with my likes with this one because there are quite a lot. As I said, I speak very fondly of this shoe. I could recommend it to a wide range of runners. So the main like for me is this feels like a race day shoe that's more tailored to sort of daily miles. So it has that race feel when you put it on foot. Um, so it's one of those exciting shoes to run in. Um, but when you're out there, it doesn't have the harshness of the carbon fiber plate. The grip, as I was saying, is brilliant. No concerns there at all. And the midsole is soft and protective when you're going easy. But then when you pick up the pace, the nylon plate almost sort of kicks in. It realizes you've picked up the pace and it becomes sort of that responsive, almost race day shoe feel underfoot. So yeah, the way this shoe sort of adapts to different runs is, is pretty impressive and definitely make it one of the best shoes um, that I've tested out. Um, in terms of versatility. Another big plus point to the version four, which may not matter to some people, but I just think this is one of the best looking shoes that Saucony have brought out. I love the detail here on the midsole and the cutouts just adds a little bit of flair. And compared to the three, I had it in that blue sort of crayon colorway. Just this black is a lot smarter and I personally look for a good looking shoe while I'm out there. So yeah, looks good. You can wear it with a pair of jeans if you wanted to. Uh, and I think that's always a good thing. So yeah, I thought I'd include that in my review. So moving on to some of my dislikes. The first is a bit of a concern for somebody with a say wider foot 
I didn't actually have any issues with this, but I did notice that the toe box of this shoe is slightly on the narrow side. That's something that can be said for all of the Endorphin Speeds. So if you had the previous versions and they fit just fine, I wouldn't worry too much about this version. The biggest concern I think for me for the Endorphin Speed 4 is just the price point. 180 pounds is an incredible amount of money to start charging for a daily tra trainer. Um, and I'm not really sure why this shoe is that expensive. Um, I looked on the US website for Saucony and it cost $170. Now when you convert that into British pounds, I think that was £134. Um, so it's £46 cheaper in America than it is in the UK, which is slightly odd. I just think £180 basically is a little bit too expensive for this shoe. That being said, it is super versatile. Uh, and if you look at it as a shoe that you can do all your training and your races in, then maybe that is a little bit more affordable. But for your average daily trainer, I think it's just a little bit too expensive. I would like to see it more at the 150, maybe 160 pounds. It does have that nylon plate technology. So I agree, it should be a little bit more than your average daily trainer. Um, but I think 180 pounds is a little bit steep for this one. I think it's gonna put a lot of people off, which is a shame because it's a really good shoe. And the only final thing to note in terms of dislikes is it does feel very similar to the Endorphin Speed 3. I think if I was blindfolded, I would struggle to feel the difference between the two shoes. The main differences for me, I found has been an improvement to the grip. Um, the Speed 4 does feel a little bit more responsive at faster paces than the previous version, only ever so slightly. I think maybe they've fine tuned that nylon plate to offer a little bit more responsiveness. Um, and the upper has also been improved slightly, but again, it feels very similar to the Endorphin Speed 3. So. Not necessarily a dislike because that was a great shoe, um, but you might want to look at picking up an Endorphin Speed 2 or 3 at a slightly cheaper uh, price point. So finally, to conclude my review of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, I would say this is a great shoe that I can recommend to a wide range of runners. Um, you can do all your runs in it, your easy runs, your tempo runs, your races if you want to. Um, I would recommend this more to sort of like a, a mid-pack marathon runner, someone running anywhere between five hours and three hours. Somebody who doesn't necessarily want a carbon fiber plate shoe to run in. Um, this sort of offers the poppy responsiveness of a race day shoe that has a little bit more comfort um, of a daily trainer. So yeah, the balance in this shoe is really good and definitely the plus point, the versatility uh, is hard to beat across all shoes on the market. I think the price point does spoil this one a little bit. Maybe in future iterations, they can look to bring that down a little bit. And maybe if you pick up the two or three, you can find yourself some bargains out there on the internet. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it so far. Gonna put plenty more miles in it. Um, but until next time, aspire to run, run to inspire, and we'll see you again soon.